Greetings and welcome to Hexed Encountered. I'm Joe. In this video, we'll be doing a gameplay, or some gameplay rather, of the game Hearts and Minds Vietnam 1965 to 1975 from Compass Games. This is the third edition and it is designed by John Paniski. And I'm going to kind of get right into it. I'll talk about setup briefly and then we're going to just get into some gameplay and go through, you know, some some number of gameplay events and see how far we get. And um, we'll see if there's a part two down the road or whatnot. So here's our rule book. And at the back or towards the back, we have our scenarios starting with 1965. Now you can start from and en within any year from 65 to, I think it's 72. Yeah, 72. And then 73 to 75, you can continue to play to the bitter end. So um, here you have some instructions on setting it up. So you can see uh, here, <clears throat> excuse me, at the top, it says players choose sides. I'm playing it solo, but I'm not using the solitaire rules. I'm just going to play it two-handed and do my best. Um, it's card-driven to some extent, so that makes things a little bit more difficult, but we're going to uh, to do our best here. So it says many players choose 66 for their first game. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to play the 66. We'll see how far we get. So separate the cards into three decks. I've already done that. Uh, the black deck, the, the red deck, and the blue deck. So you would remove and set aside from the red and blue decks the 1969 cards, which I've already done, as well as the campaign cards, which I've also done. Then we shuffled the black deck and deal them in, basically you deal them equally to both sides and you then shuffle them in with the red cards and the black card or the blue cards rather for both sides and you have your play deck. Then we're gonna draw five cards from your game deck for your starting hand. So this would be the blue deck and there are some black, there are 13 black cards in here as well. So I'm gonna take the first five from this deck and this will be my blue hand and I'm gonna put it on my left side and then this is the red player deck. So this is the communist side. And we're going to take the top five here and do the same thing. And I'm going to put this on my right side, which I guess should maybe be the other way, but this is just how I'm doing it. Um, all political joking aside. So once we've done that, we may secretly choose a campaign card. I'm not going to do that for this first term. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later, perhaps. Mix all the VC units face down and put them in the VC pool box. I've already done that. The VC pool box is right over here. And I'm going to zoom out and you'll be able to see it here in a bit. Uh, we're going to skip our reinforcement phase. Uh, you may find it convenient to stack future reinforcements by entry year next to the map. You'll have extra units uh, and it tells you what those are. They will enter either by card or during the Easter offensive. You start with units in the dead pool. Uh, I don't think we do, looking at what's set up here. You would put them in the Deadpool. Uh, put your units in the map as listed on this in the scenario. For ease of setups, the provinces run north to south. Now, north is to my right, and south would be to my left. So we're going to start in that direction and work down. Then after we set up, the blue player may redeploy up to five friendly units to any provinces that do not contain red flags or red units. There's no, yeah, no scenario for 73 to 75. The scenarios represent reasonable starting positions and are not historically accurate. If you would like more accuracy, you may remove campaign cards by their real date. So then you can do, do those. All right. So I'm not going to pull any campaign cards out. We'll just, we'll just play this kind of, we're going to wing it to some extent. So here is our startup. You can see both sides get four, uh, four resource points. And then you can see the, um, the starting location for all the units. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to, I'm going to let this sit up here for a moment so that if you want to, you can pause the video and kind of read through where everything is going to be set up and then I'll come back and it will be set up here in just a few seconds. Okay. So we are all set up here. And uh, so here is my U S or allied deck and here is my, um, 
or or hand, I should say, and here's my communist hand over here. Now, this is the entirety of the map, uh, so you can see everything. I will be zooming in and showing pieces as we move around. So this is north, this is south, Saigon is right here. Uh, this is North Vietnam, the red, there's only a, sli a slight piece of it on the map. And then all of this here is South Vietnam. And then we have, of course, Cambodia here and Laos here. And then Thailand over there, but Thailand's not in play. So the red stars indicate those are controlled by uh, the communists. And the blue stars, of which there are three, indicate pacification. So that's not control, but you can't have pacification without control. So anything that's not under control is technically considered under blue control or allied control. Uh, so all this center area right here is um, technically blue, unless, of course, it has a red on it. So basically anything with a red on it is communist controlled and anything else is going to be allied controlled. But the pacification you have to... From the communist standpoint, you have to remove that before you can actually take control of a province. And here are all our provinces. So I'm going to continue the play here, but I'm going to give you a moment to absorb the map, and then I'm going to zoom in and we'll start, uh, start playing the game. Okay, so before we get started, this is our game track here. So this tracks the resource points or uh, Strategic resource points, I think, or stockpile, I forget what it is, but SRPs, those are resource points that are held back, kind of, um, and you can use them to purchase things, and then you'll get more resource points off your cards as you play them. So you, when you pull a card, when you play a card, you'll get the points from the card, and then you can use those points to do actions or to uh, pay for the event that's in here as well. But you can see we have a hawk counter here. Hawk on one side, dove on the other side. This is like the political will. And when you start in 65, it starts hawk 10. So after one year of war, it is at hawk 7. So the uh, political will has been whittled a little bit. We do have some provinces under communist control, as we saw a moment ago. And you can still kind of see a little bit of it right now. Both sides have four SRPs. This is our VC pool. Uh, here's the Deadpool. So they'll, uh, when units are eliminated, they'll move here. And then at the end in the interphase, they move to the body count box and that impacts, uh, your Hawk and Dove level, your political will level. So the first phase of the game is the reinforcement phase, which we skip in the first turn. Now I can move five of my units around, uh, from the blue side, speaking as the blue side player. Um, the red side is basically already set up. You can actually up here in the corner, I didn't mention this, but this is Laos, and we have the Pathet Lao is up here, kind of on the very edge of the shot, and then right here is the government forces. So they have blue, blue stripe, and the Pathet Lao has a red stripe. So again, that goes with which side they're on, so to speak. I mean, this is a, I mean, the Ho Chi Minh Trail runs right through here. This dotted line is the Ho Chi Minh Trail. So it obviously ran from North Vietnam through Laos and Cambodia where they could always infiltrate uh, men and material into South Vietnam. And this was technically out of bounds as far as the Allied side was concerned, although we do know that the, uh, that the U.S. did operate in there from time to time uh, throughout the, well, through, through various portions of the war, I guess I should say. All right, so we're going to move on to the next turn, and I'm going to, uh, well, not the next turn, the next phase. We have an abbreviated sequence of play here. So you wait reinforcement phase, which it says skip turn one, which we are. Then we have hand refill phase, draw to five cards. We've already done that. We're at five each, so we skip that as well. Then we go to the card play phase, which is the, the meat of the game. Players alternate playing cards, red first, for four rounds. So there are four rounds. You have five cards. There are response cards that you can play in response to certain things. So that's where that extra card may come into play. So um, card play phase, players alternate playing cards, as I just mentioned. Then in here, you also have the blue can conduct bombing missions. We do have here in this little box here, air base box. We have a couple of B-52 counters that we can use for bombing. And we will... Um, 
we will show that we will see that as as we go through. Uh, you can buy an event printed on the played card. As I mentioned, the, the events on the card will have an event on it. So let's just actually we'll look at our red deck here since they go first. So we have a three black cards in here. Black cards will have events for both sides. So this being the red turn, they would play the red, the red uh, event. So we have Uncle Ho with five resource points. So that's a pretty powerful card. And then in the event, which you'd have to pay two of those five RPs for, in every battle round this year where you attack, add plus one to your battle factor. So it's a bat, it's a die roll modifier on your on your battles. Pretty pretty good card. Then we have the Hanoi Hilton here, which um, is the how low pow uh, p o pow <laughs> p o w prison in Hanoi. The uh, the red here would be two out of the four. You can move one allied unit from the dead pool to the body count box. So this would be useful after assuming we. When we have battles, uh, if a if an allied unit move, ends up in here, this would let you move them to the dead pool from the body count box. And you've got the pucker factor. Three, uh, this has only three resource points. It costs one to play this. You would choose a province that has both sides. Currently, there are none of those. Your opponent must retreat at least one of his units from that province. You must you may buy this event more than once. Okay. Um, so you basically you keep the card and you could buy it like three times if you wanted to, and then essentially you know whittle down your opponent out of a out of a province. Dust off four. You move an infantry unit from your body count box. Well, it's it, there's there's only one body count box, but we move them from the body count ba body count box and place it as a veteran unit in a legal province with no enemy units. And we have our other red card, and you can see it has a response marker on it. The Tunnels of Ku Chi, North Vietnam maintained vast tunnel complexes. Of course, if you are familiar with the history of that war, there were a lot of tunnel operations. Uh, play if attacked in South Vietnam, all red units in the battle evade successfully. So units during the battle phase, the defender can attempt to evade the attack and escape unscathed. Um, there is a risk involved, of course. So let's just say we're going to play Uncle Ho, okay? And in every battle this round, we'll, we'll, we'll buy the event for two resource points, leaving us with three. And in every battle round this year where you attack, you add plus one to your battle factors. So now I am going to recenter my camera, and we're going to talk about movement and so on and so forth. Okay, so here's our Uncle Ho card again. So we paid, um, why is it not, there we go. We paid uh, two RPs of our five, leaving us with three, to, uh, to get this bonus for our battles. Now up here, so I've zoomed in. This is kind of central South Vietnam here. You have Cambodia right here, and here's the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Now in this, in this box right here, we have a North Vietnamese Army, NVA, artillery unit, Two veteran units, and you can see that their combat factor here on the left is a two. Counters are real simple. This is their combat factor. That's their movement factor. Um, and this is an untried, two untried units. You can see the combat factor is only a one. So basically, if you fight a battle and survive, you, you, you promote to veteran. Um, essentially, there's a little bit more nuance to it, but that's ba basically what it is. So we can uh, we pay one RP, leaving us with uh, two, and we can activate everybody in this province, including our VC unit up here, right? And the VC are hidden, and you don't know what this is until you flip it over. Now, as the VC player, or the, the communist player, rather, you can flip that over and look at it if you want to see uh, what it is, but you can't reveal it uh, to... You want to keep it a secret, basically. From the uh, from the other player, I don't know what this is because I haven't looked at it. All of these were placed out randomly. Some of these I turned the wrong way. I wanted to have them all kind of facing the the camera, but I, in my haste, did not do that correctly everywhere. So we have some sideways units in some places, but I think I got them all now. All right, so we're going to pay one, and that'll activate all these guys. Now, you have a stacking limit, I think, of uh, five, if I remember correctly. Sorry. This is the way the stacking works. It's a little more complicated than five. It's four infantry 
Uh, this is the red stacking. Four, re four regular infantry, so we have those here. Two and two, that's four. Plus one artillery, which we also have. Plus one tank, which we don't have. And up to two VC. So we can take all of these guys. We're going to move here into Dalak. And down here, there are four North uh, Arvins, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, so South Vietnamese Army, two veterans, two uh, untried. So we're going to have a, you know, a, a North versus South Vietnamese battle here. So we're going to move all these guys in. And again, we can just stack them up. Right. And we'll bring the we'll bring the VC with us as well. So we've come in infiltrated from the uh, Ho Chi Minh Trail into Dal uh, into Dalak and we're going to have ourselves a battle. So in theory, these guys could attempt to evade, but they're not going to. All right. So the first thing is if the VC is participating and this is up to the to the red player, if the VC is participating, you have to reveal and then resolve it. Okay, so it's bad intel. That means that's not actually a, a VC unit. So when that happens, you have bad intel um, event, basically. It's like an event check, right? So these events apply to only South Vietnamese provinces. Do not roll on this table in Laos and Cambodia. When a player is asked or required to spend RPs, he may spend stockpile. That's stockpile, okay? RPs too, not strategic or whatever I called it before. And they do not count against his actions. When an event specifies units or a province, and it is always in the province where the event occurred. So we roll a, a D6 and then we roll another D6. You don't roll them at the same time. This game comes with some nice big chunky D6s here. So I'm going to roll the, uh, let's put this right here. I'm going to roll the, the red die. And we got a two. Now we look, whoops, we look here and we find two, which is one, two. So this is just going to be faulty intelligence. If it had been a three, then you're going to get something in here. So I, I really almost don't even, well, I don't literally need to roll this. I will anyway. And we got a six, but you can see one to six is just faulty intelligence. Nothing here but an empty village and a few water buffalo. So this counter goes back into our VC pool. So now the next stage is, well, we didn't evade. Okay, so if blue is attacking, air naval units may react, but both blue, red and blue units are, must be present, which is the case, but blue is not attacking. Okay, so each player sums his battle factors, rolls a die, and consults the battle table on the player chart. The fire is simultaneous. Players promote surviving untried infantry units. The attacker now spends his resource point for the battle. So it costs you one resource point. But if the battle actually does not happen, you get to keep that resource point. Our battle is going to happen because we're going to roll because the defender did not attempt to evade or attempt to evade and fail at it. Okay, so we've now spent four of our five um, RPs here. Okay, so let's add up our factors, right? So we have two for the artillery. And the, you can only use these support units, which are artillery tanks. And on the U.S. side, you also have gunboats, uh, the Navy, the Blue Water Navy, and uh, Air Cav. So we have two, and they always have to be with an infantry. They can't fight on their own. They have to be with uh, ground forces. Whoops, I dropped it. Where did it go? Oh, it's in the dice tower. All right, so we have two, and we have two veteran units. That's six, and then we have two untried units. That would make eight. So their strength is eight. And the Arvins are going to be six because they have two veterans, two each, four, five, six for the two untried. So we'll roll. We'll, I'm going to roll them both since our combat simultaneous anyway. And we'll use red for communist and blue for the allies. And the allies actually rolled higher. So they got a five. And they got a one. So their total is nine. But they get to add one to your battle factors. So they get an additional one, which pushes them to 10. But that's not still not going to beat the 11 because they had six plus five is 11. So they have 11. So they win it 11 to 10. But winning isn't necessarily the end, right? So here's our battle table, which goes through the steps. And then you look 
at what they scored and the result. So red got a 10. Okay, so the result is R. That eliminates one blue unit. Okay, so we'll put one of our uh, we'll put one of our untried in the Deadpool, which is just off shot here. Okay, now the red or the blue rather got an eleven, which is the next one down, and that's one R. And you can see R target must either use one RP or eliminate one unit. So they're going to lose one unit, and they have to decide if they want to pay their last or last available RP because they've spent four, they have one less, one left rather, or uh, eliminate two units. So let's just say that they're going to eliminate one of their untried. And oops, move my chair. And um, choose to pay the one RP, which leaves them out of uh, out of uh, resource points so they're done with their turn uncle ho will go into the discard pile and we would then move on to the uh, us turn okay so i've moved the uh the camera out a little bit so we're going to play this um this card here which is the other war it has a uh it gives us three points if we play the event, we can pacify any province in South Vietnam, even one with a red flag, redeploy an allied unit there, no ambush, if no allied units are present. So um, what we can do, and here's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to actually redeploy this veteran unit right here to Contum, and I'm going to flip this because we're going to pacify it. All right, so we're going to put him in here. Right, that was free. Essentially, it goes along with the cost for this. So I, I am down to two RPs now. And so now we'll do a battle action here. Right. And I'll let you see how evasion works. Okay, so here's our evasion chart. Okay, so we're going to roll 1d6, and we have a VC down, which means it's it's unrevealed. So we're looking in this column or row right here. So if we roll a one or a two. At blank equals a fail and committed to battle. If we roll three, four, five, or six, the unit will successfully evade the attack. So I'm going to roll the, the red die. And we got a five. So that means they successfully evade. So the retreat rules basically are pretty simple. Since he's a red unit, he can go into uh, Laos in this case, or Cambodia because it connects to both. Um, he could also go here into Quang Gai, which already has a VC unit and has a red flag. He could also go here to play Ku. Um, any of those are fine. So let's move him here to Quang Gai so that we get a little reinforcement here. We now have two VC down here to go along with that. So now the, uh, the allied turn will continue and we still have two RPs. Now they can use bombers as well. So let's talk about the uh, the bombers who are on the air base, which is off shot. But this is, of course, the bomber counter. And on the other side, you have its used version, which just shows bombs going off underneath it. So, so but bombing is really simple. You pick a province and you bomb the enemy units that are in that province. So here in Keen Hoa, we have a bunch of units. Um, four infantry units and an artillery unit. So that's a pretty decent target group there. Now, um, which gives us a decent chance of uh, defeating them or eliminating them, I should say. So you would put your, put your bomber unit in here and then flip it to the spent side. And then you roll a die, and I'll show you the bomber attack, ground attack table here in a moment. So here's our bomber ground attack, right? We're going to roll 1d6. And then you have die roll modifiers. Um, plus one if red anti-aircraft are present, plus two during monsoon, minus two Lima site 85 in Laos or zone one. We are in zone four. Okay. Um, and then you can see blank is a miss. One or two, eliminate one or two units. One R, eliminate 
one unit plus a plus a um, stockpile resource point or another unit. So I'm going to roll my die here on this, and then we'll go back and look at what the result is. So let's roll our die, and we got a four. And a four with five units. There are five enemy units there. Four is one. So they're going to eliminate a unit. So they will take one of their untried and put it in the Deadpool, which is actually right below here. And now you can see the Deadpool right here. There are currently There's currently one Arvin and two uh, NVA units in there. And that would be um, another action, but that's a free action. So, um, and we did not have to pay the battle cost for the successful evasion by the VC up in Contum. So that one ended up being free. So we still have two RPs that we can use this turn. The problem is I have two and your, your um, stockpile RPs are very useful to have, you know, more of because there are events where you may have to prop up a, um, like the Cambodian government or the Laotian government or something like that. And so you need, um, and also as we see, you can pay an, an SRP to keep a unit alive. Uh, actually, and they did spend one, so I need to move them down to three. So I'm actually going to, um, it's tempting to go and, and move in here. Let's do, let's do that. So this is Saigon. We have a veteran, an untried, and an, and an Arvin artillery here. We're going to activate Saigon, okay? And we're going to move these three into this, uh, into Bindong, Binduong, maybe, uh, where they have a VC. And then we'll spend our other RP to attack it. Now, again, he has to, um, he can attempt to evade, and so he will. And as we saw before, I won't show it again. VC down, so three to six, and he will evade one or two, and he gets caught, and there's a battle. And it's a six. So he successfully evades, and we'll just send him here to uh, Tai Nin, or Tai Nin. And now we have that in there. It's still, whoops, still red controlled. And we'll talk about how to pacify in a future turn since I've spent my RPs here to, uh, Saigon is a little thinly protected right now. Uh, but this goes back to the air base and stays in this, in this uh, situation, spent basically until we get to a new year, another year, or the, we have a card or an event that would actually refuel it before then. This card goes in our discard pile, so I will do that as well. And that is the end of one turn of the four turns in 1966. And having said that, I'm going to stop the video to try and keep it relatively short. I will do a part two. Uh, to show at least the rest of this turn and perhaps go into the next year and we'll see how things go basically I don't want to make any promises because then I feel guilty if I for, for whatever reason I can't make it happen so that's going to do it for now I do thank you guys for watching please consider liking sharing and or subscribing as always uh, you know have any questions or comments feel free to post them and I will do my best to reply but that's it for now. Hopefully you'll come back and check out part two. But in the meantime, I'm Joe. This is the Hexed Encounter channel. And until next time, happy gaming.